I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Hello, Dave. How's your week? It's amazing. It's going quite well. How about you, Marissa? Good, good. Um, you know what? It's good. It, the sun has been shining this week, and there's hope for spring. And yes. we're not getting the nor'easter that everyone else is getting right now. <laughs> That's true. I had a, I had a colleague of mine um, uh, that was supposed to join, join us on a conference call uh, Monday night. And he said, I'm heading to D.C. today because I want to get there before mm, the storms. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'll take this and, as know, a those... little win for us. Exactly. And they don't handle it well downstate, no. especially in, down in the, the mid-Atlantic states yeah. when they get this much snow. Yeah. And I heard I heard some areas, heard it today, some areas could get 16 to 18 inches. Yes. So. My, my brother down in Manhattan is, I think they're prepared for like 12 to 15. Wow. So, yeah. Good for them. Congratulations. <laughs> exactly. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> but yeah. as the day we're recording this, it's actually spring, technically. Technically so. spring, yep. And um, like I said, the sun has been shining. So I, I, I'm I, hopeful that we will get some melt and it'll start really looking like spring soon enough. I think so. And maybe by the time this airs, it will actually feel like spring. Potentially. That'd be great. Look at a quick forecast for next week no it's going to be in the 40s i say I, I think i saw some 45s or something like that so right okay so i'll we'll take, take it. it yeah absolutely absolutely uh -huh. so today yeah we're talking about something a little unexpected um ballet which exactly i love the topic i i've studied ballet for i don't know 20 years i taught ballet for a few and now i've got wow. my little one she's anxious to start ballet herself so tell me what was the toughest thing about ballet the toughest thing about ballet um it's a very it's very precise okay um, and so and there are like small nuances between things that make a big difference so just i think it's a ballet is, is beautiful it's complex um requires discipline uh Got to learn some French, and I, I, and I think that I mean I love precision. I think um, ballet can teach dancers a lot about life and hard work, and um, can make you a better student and a better employee. And as we're going to find out today, a better leader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so I think there's a lot of complexities to it. Okay. Yeah. Um. So let's just jump right in. So the, the email that was posted this morning, uh, and I'm going to open up my copy of it here just so that I speak accurately, was entitled The Ballerina. And people, I'm sure my typical listeners and readers are going to say, what in the world happened to Dave? <laughs> Plus, probably a lot of them are probably saying, gee, we didn't know Dave was a fan of the ballet. And no offense, Marissa, but I'm not. <laughs> um. And my guess is it's just because they don't understand it. So mm -hmm. the closest I ever got to the real ballet would be uh, Symphoria's Christmas concert where they always bring in some very talented young people mm -hmm. to do some some ballet with different selections from the Nutcracker. And it's it's always interesting. Um, it's it's something that really I, I'm always surprised at, at what people physically can do. But the way I came up with this theme was uh, a book that I'm actually reading now for the third time. Uh, and that book is entitled um, Cherish. And it's actually a book about um, enriching a marriage. And, and in the book, the author says that within a marriage relationship, um, the, the spouse's job is to really support and encourage and, and lift up the other spouse so that they can achieve and do things that they could never do on their own. And the example that the author gives is ballet. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, that the ballerina, that the, the, a male on a ballet floor, and I don't even stage, I guess that's what you call it. Yeah. And you know this far better than I do. His role is there to simply highlight the ballerina and make the ballerina better than she could be on her own. Mm -hmm. And the other, and then to fade into the shadows and not be seen. The other parallel that I thought of right away is because now this is something that I'm a lot more interested in, but but figure skating, and and I know we have a colleague in in our office whose whose daughter was a a figure skater, mm -hmm. 
And she said that in pairs figure skating, that's exactly what the male figure skater is supposed to do. Just support the other skater, you know, so that that skater can spin faster, jump higher, jump farther mm -hmm. than they could on their own. And immediately when I heard that example, I thought about leadership. Right. That within the leaders, within an organization or a team, the leader's role is to really help their staff achieve things that they could never achieve on their own mm -hmm. and fade out of the way and not take the credit for it. And, and I just, I, I, I was just so, so moved by that thought that, you know, I, and I kept chewing on it. And, and I was also working on a, a teaching that I delivered this week um, to one of our, our member organizations on the significance of recognition. And I saw the same parallel just keep coming through that if leaders would really focus on helping to make their team members better in, an, in a way that, in a supportive role, that they can achieve greater things, do greater things, you know, lift them up. Think about that imagery of, of, of an athlete, and I'll call a, a, a ballet dancer an athlete. Maybe I probably shouldn't call him an athlete. Maybe I should, I don't know, no, athlete, an artist. No, athlete is, is accurate too. Because it's truly athletic. It is. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if their job is to take that athlete and help that athlete achieve things that they could never, ever do on their own, then they're going to be successful as a leader. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I love the, like, the key part, too, is to then step out of, of right. the limelight. It's not then about taking the credit, look how good I made you look, or, you know, look where I got you. It's none of that. You know, you, you have exactly. to. It's, it's two parts. It's two parts, and they're both equally important. Right. Right. And I, I was, um, as I thought about this and I, and I, cause I usually, for me, the, the gold standard in my opinion for leadership is, is John Maxwell. And mm -hmm. I, and I started reflecting on, on how does John react and interact when he's around his team? And one of the things, and I mentioned this many, many months ago on a, on a podcast, uh, because this is actually episode 41, yep. I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I mentioned before that John has, has this thing that they call his 30-second rule, and that when he goes into a meeting with his staff, he finds ways to recognize something specific that they have done in front of other people very, very quickly as they at a, a quick staff meeting type of thing. Um, so here's just, an, I, and I'm going to do something that I don't know if I've, I may be able, I've done it a couple times. I'm going to read something out of one of his books. Um, this would be an example of John doing this. Uh, he starts out, um, gets into a meeting. They're getting ready to have a staff meeting. And he says, David, I heard you hit it out of the park this morning on the conference call. Great job. Larry, you're making me look so good with that consulting consultation in Denver. Thank you. Kevin, I saw the numbers for April. Nobody else in the world sees and seizes an opportunity the way you do. Mm -hmm. Les, I'm glad you made the trip down here to be with us today. It's just, it's very specific. It's very quick. And not only is he recognizing that individual for their benefit, but for the team's benefit, he's lifting them up. Right. And, and they see things and skills in that team member that others may not see. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was just, he's just so gifted in that area. And then I've also watched him, you know, so we're at, let's say we're at our, at our, our semi-annual conference in, in Orlando and there could be 3,000, 4,000 people at this event, let's say. And John gets up to do a teaching. And the first thing he's doing is recognizing other people. You know, or he'll say, wasn't it amazing how this person did this or that? Um, and then, so that's kind of the recognition piece. Then the lifting up. One of the things that, the reasons that John started the John Maxwell team was so that he could give people like me an opportunity to do things. To, he, he opens doors, let's call it that way. Mm -hmm. Making that connection. Okay, John Maxwell, leadership expert, wrote, you know, now almost 100 books. So if this guy's certified by John, there must be something worth listening to, at least to begin with. So not only does he open the doors, but then he made sure that certain of his materials would be put in, an, in a format that we could use them easily once we were certified. Right. So again, it's lifting up people 
to a level that they couldn't go on their own. Now, mm -hmm. so have I stayed there? No. And and people have people have said to me, well, you know, so how valuable was your certification? I says, well, I I think the teaching that I got was very valuable. Um, the materials that I've been given access to are extremely valuable. It's a lot of work that that I don't have to put into that the prep part right away. But now that I've been doing it for enough years. It's less about John, and it's more about the teachings that I'm bringing, and a lot of the teachings that I'm bringing now become my own. Well, and I think that's but, that's exactly what you that that would something that you would want, you know, if you're exactly if you're lifting up your employees and letting them shine, they will feel empowered to do the same, exactly. and and lift up other people in their lives, and and change the lives of others, and and really just it spreads a lot of positivity and increases morale and efficiency and trust and more gets done i think so it's exactly right. how you'd want it to go exactly and what it what it ends up being is the ultimate in empowerment mm -hmm. because you've you've lifted the person up you've highlighted them you've shown them how to, you've modeled the way for them to do it so to speak mm -hmm. you've given them the tools to begin to succeed and then you sit back and you watch. Mm -hmm. And and maybe since I kind of stumbled on this example of of uh, the John Maxwell team, so some would say, so this is great. So you've got all this stuff and now they've done their job, so to speak. No, because I mentioned a semi-annual conference or gathering. So they're making it available twice a year for those of us that have gone through the program to go back to the source, so to speak for more support, more training, mm -hmm. additional. Now, I don't I typically don't go twice a year, I go once a year. But then they also continue to give me newer opportunities, newer materials, you know, different projects, those type of things, different connections mm -hmm. to be able to take the craft, the skill again to even another level. So not right. only does the leader lift up that person, but once they're soaring, they actually find ways to take them to an even higher level mm -hmm. than they would have done before. Mm -hmm. um, one, one of the newer things that, that was introduced to us last summer was that for those of us that have, you know, have shown the commitment to, to the program is that we would be able to begin to train and certify our own coaches just as we were. So there again, it's that idea of how do I take a person and get them to a level where they're doing things they've never, ever been able to do on their own. Right. Without and, having yeah. to take all the credit and do it, you know, like they're right. empowering you to do that now. Like you don't have to, to go through everything that you went through. You're able to take what you know and, and help others. Exactly. Yeah. And, and take the message to people that they could never get it to. Right. And I think that's the other thing that the leader really needs to understand is you know, and we like when we talked about level five leadership, you know, that's at that level where we're moving way beyond being successful to living that life of significance. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, I, you know, some of the leaders might say, well, wow. So I put all that effort in and nobody's ever going to know that I did it. I don't think that's ever the case. I mm -hmm. think the, the reality, and this is something that I've always talked about in supervisory leadership. Your success is dependent on your team's success. Mm -hmm. And if you develop your team and that team is firing on all cylinders, people will notice. And if you consider legacy too, um, you know, you don't want right. you don't want to die and just be like, oh, he was successful. You know, right. if you, you know, lead this, lead a business and it's a successful business and, and people, you know, recognize you as a strong leader and then when you do pass and you can leave that behind that's exactly. that's significance right it is yes mm -hmm. you know i was i and i won't mention the company I'm, uh i was talking with someone this morning about a company that had an iconic brand um that that all of us knew and know and the business is in bankruptcy mm -hmm. and may fade out of existence and you just think how tragic Right. You know, um, but yet there's other organizations that have maintained that in that integrity, maintained that vision, that passion, 
and a legacy just continues to live on. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I think of, of, you know, Revere Copper. I mean, it's been around since Paul Revere. Yeah. You know, we're talking hundreds of years, you know, you think of companies, uh, well, some of our Magni member companies, Stickley, you know, Cathedral Candle, Crucible, Mm -hmm. been around for a long time. The company that I ran for 18 years, uh, it was part of the management team and for a total of 18 years, um, self lock turns a hundred in 2020. Wow. You know, those are, those are rarities these days, but mm-hmm. there were organizations that valued in developing people as well as products. Mm-hmm. And those people continued that legacy. So, so I want, I want to touch back, go back a little bit back to the ballet. Mm-hmm. So you touched on, um, what were some things it taught you? that you can use in life. Yeah, I think there are a lot, there's a, a lot of parallels to ballet and leadership and ba- ballet and just life in general. Um, discipline and hard work, of course. I mean, those are, mm-hmm. those are two of the obvious ones. But I think, um, you know, continual learning and improvement. Um, you never, you know, just like in life and in leadership, you don't you don't really ever arrive. Like there's no finish line. Um, you're constantly strengthening your skills and developing yourself to be a better, a better dancer. Um, you know, yeah. if we're talking ballet or a, a better person or a better leader, um, depending on what we're talking about here. But, um, I think that's one of the big ones. I mean, you know, as a kid, when you start ballet, of course, you know, you progress into different levels. You start with creative movement and then pre-ballet and work your way up ballet one, two, three, you know, you get older, you get the higher you go. And some, you know, some dancers go professional or join companies, but, um, there's never that, that end, end game. Um, it's, you know, you either, you either choose to stop or, or you, choose to keep going. It's not like you, you come to an end point. Uh, I think that was one of the big things and, uh, dedication of course comes with okay. that. So you can't just, you know, you, you can't fall once and decide you're never going to try a certain leap mm. again. Um, okay. or, you know, there's obviously setbacks too, just like in life Sure. there, you know, I've injured myself before and had to take some time off. Um, and then, and then you have to rebuild. So yep. it's not like you injure yourself, take time off, and then start back up where you were again. I know if, if I were to try again right now, it would be a lot more difficult for me. Um, sure. It, it's something that takes a lot of dedication and focus. So thinking about ballet, mm-hmm. what, what future does ballet hold for your life? Or what does ballet have in your life? Hmm, what do you mean? Hmm. So you you were you said about twenty years yep. of your life you were involved in ballet. So what happens to it now with in terms of how it you and ballet? Me and ballet. Is there a, yeah, is there a continued path for you in ballet? I th- I I think so. Um it's something I've like always wanted to pick up again. Um I almost did again this year. Because I not only do I like the the physical aspect and the challenge that way, but I enjoy the mental challenge as well. Um, because like I said, it is kind of a mental game too. It, it can be discouraging at times and it can be challenging physically and mentally. Um, and I like that. And it's like an exercise mm-hmm. for my brain too. Sure. But um, I'm really excited to get my my daughter and you know, future daughter, um, that opportunity to, to try that as well, because I think it is, you learn so much from it. Exactly. And that's kind of where I, where I thought you would go with it. Yeah. Isla is already so interested in it. And you also just mentioned a future daughter. Yes. Yep. So I didn't know if you were keeping that secret, (laughs) so you can't anymore because now it's out. I can't anymore. (laughs) Yes. The second baby girl will be joining us later in the summer. In July. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And and so I think I see a parallel then too is so you've you've got this something that you were passionate about mm-hmm. that now you're passing on to the next generation. Yeah. And um 
that goes right back to our conversations about leadership and, and teaching things and adding value to people. And, and it was interesting. My daughter sent me a text this past Saturday and, um, she just, and out of the blue, she sent me a text and she said, thank you so much for teaching me to ski. Aww. She said, I know when you did it, we didn't have a lot of money and I know it was a struggle at times, but I just came home from spending a wonderful day skiing with my family. And she said she was able to do it because I took the time and paid the sacrifice. Well, and I told her, I said, it wasn't, there wasn't that much of a sacrifice. To be honest, it was an excuse. Okay, I got to teach the kids to ski now, so I get to go ski. <laughs> but it was that same thing of, of passing on mm-hmm. that, that legacy, that, that opportunity, which again, is, it, that's the whole role of leadership, mm-hmm. giving people an opportunity to do things perhaps they could never do on their own, yep. making, making that connection with a person that they would have never been able to make on their own. And certainly, you know, a youngster can't teach themselves ballet, nor can they teach themselves to ski. Mm-hmm. Others had to do it. So I think, too, the, you know, the great leaders are the ones that look for opportunities to really do things for people they could never do for themselves. Making a connection with somebody they've never been able to meet on their own. And that, to me, that's this whole value of lifting your team up, helping them to be better than they ever thought they could be. And to be honest, they couldn't be that good without you. And then, as we mentioned, backing into the shadows, letting them bask in the, in the recognition, the awareness of, of the achievements that they made. Mm-hmm. So for me, that, that was the whole concept of the ballerina, which, again, came from a book on cherishing your spouse. Yeah. And I had to think, too, wouldn't it be awesome if every manager, and we, we learned this last summer, at, or last fall, excuse me, at Live to Lead, where Dave Ramsey said, if you have direct reports, you have to choose to love them. Mm-hmm. And he said, you don't always like them, kind of like kids, but you just love them. You have to make that decision. And I think, wouldn't it be great if every manager, every leader, if a, well, if a manager wants to become a great leader, if they would learn to cherish the gifts and the talents of the people that report to them. Because that's when you really begin to appreciate their skill sets. Yep. And them as an individual, what Absolutely. they bring to you. Right. You know, man, my life would be really miserable at MACNI if I didn't have great folks like you that work with me, that, mm-hmm. that help make my life better, that, that bring things into my life and help me do what I do better. I would, this podcast would not be available, would not be what it is if you weren't willing to help me. And so I really appreciate that. I and now it. you're going to ask me, <laughs> what are we going to talk about next week? Yeah. Are we, uh, you, anything unexpected again? <laughs> I don't have a clue. <laughs> How's that? Hey, that's okay. So I've got a few days to have other people speak into my life and mm-hmm. give me some ideas. and mm-hmm. Which is why we always say, if you have an idea, send it in to us. Yeah. You know, um, it's always great. Like when today's blog post was ma- emailed out, you know, I got responses back from people. You know, Mm -hmm. and and it might have just been this one really spoke to me today. Well, those things matter to us because it Mm -hmm. tells us we're doing what we should be doing. Right. Right. So if you want to hear about more unexpected topics, I'm sure we could pull something together. (laughs) If we can do an episode on ballet, I'm sure we can. If we can do an episode on ballet, we can do an episode on just about anything. Because you never know where that inspiration is going to come from. No. No. So anything exciting this weekend? This weekend, this weekend. Um, no, I don't think so. I don't that's good. Th- yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just need to like lay low. Yeah. And rest. Yeah. No, I think that's that's what we're gonna do. How about you? Okay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, my daughter and her three little ones are gonna come from Ohio this weekend and spend next week with us because they're off the week before Easter. So Oh, how awesome. Bethany and Silas, Lily and Levi will be here for the whole week. So which is cool. Is the bathroom done? So the bathroom. So it's almost done. So right now I'm I'm actually the the shower will be completed this week. The tub is in. It's fully functional. So it's really close. We're just doing little bits of trim. That kind of thing. So awesome. And you know, I haven't put the windows in because it's too, it's just too cold to open up two holes in the walls right now. That is true. But the but the rough ins for the windows are framed. All I got to do is once this weather warms up, pull the siding down, slide the windows in, and 
we're good to go then. I've been watching some of uh, PBS This Old House, and I oh, isn't that a great? I, show? I love it. I'm, my husband's like, I can't believe you watch this. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I secretly think that I have some kind of future in like tiling. I just feel like I'd be really good at that. Um, but I, I always envision like you on that show. I'm like, oh, they're doing the bathroom. This is what, <laughs> this is what David's life has been. <laughs> It has. And, you know, I've, I really enjoyed it, but I, what I haven't enjoyed is that it's it's taking me so long because some of these things take a long time. You just can't yeah. do it quick. But how rewarding so, is it? I mean, it's got to be. I'll tell you, when I filled that tub mm -hmm. and turned those jets on, it was quite rewarding. How's yeah. That? Yeah. It's all, especially when you're doing the work yourself, you know, like right. to think, you know, that you – you did it, but then I'm sure you are you, knowing you. You're probably looking for every little tiny flaw that you can I find. Am. So I hope that you can let that go. But I I hope so too. <laughs> my daughter I'll even my daughter in law even said to me, and she knows this. She's an interior designer. Mm -hmm. She said, "Dad, nobody's going to see those things but you." Nope. No. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross, and this was the next page. Mm -hmm.